Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the little subscribe button for us? It does help us out. Are you a fan of the Game Boy Color and all of its games? Most of the good Pokemon and a lot of the good Mario games are on that system, and it is one of my favorite. But the screen is a little poor, <laughs> to say the least. Unless if you're sitting on a couch with a lamp right beside you, it's hard to see. A lot of the solutions to that are either fiddly or expensive or just not that good, whether it's a blurry front light or a hard to install smaller screen than the OE screen. But now from Handheld Legend, we have a new Q5 IPS screen, and it looks like this. It's not too hard in a, to install, and you don't even have to solder any wires if you really don't want to. So, if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today on the bench, uh, we have another fun project. Uh, I know that we've been doing a lot of screens and mods lately, but um, you know, a lot of our customers have just uh, been requesting it. So, today on the bench, we have a, another IPS screen. This is the new Q5 IPS for the Game Boy Color. And uh, this one is uh, especially of interest to me. Uh, this kit uh, we purchased, but it was uh, it came from Handheld Legend um, as a shop that I've talked about in many of my other videos. Um, and on that note, um, we are doing still running a giveaway for a $25 Handheld Legend gift card, and I'll link it up in the corner here. So anyway, what we have on the bench today, as you can see here, a uh, the IPS kit, as, as supplied from Handheld Legend. And I think in our last video, we did um, our Game Gear screen, and it was a much heavier LCD panel. And this is back to the very thin and very fragile IPS screens. Um, and as you can see, you've got a glass panel, a very thin plastic frame, and a reflector. And that's it. Um, these, these are are fragile. So I'm just going to set that right there for now. It also came with some insulating materials and some double side tape as normal and our converter board with uh, a couple touch sensors. Now this kit is solderless but you can't access the menu without soldering I believe three wires and I'll have to double check that. Um, yeah. Here we go. So we have select A, B, battery and ground. We don't have to s supply the battery and the ground, but we do need to hook to our select, our A and our B buttons. So there will be at least three wires that we're gonna connect so we can get our menu. Now, the nice thing about getting into the menu, we can access all the standard features that these touch uh, sensors will do, like the, the dimming and the pixel mode and, and whatnot. But then we can also get to the full menu, which now allows us to not have to worry too bad on how we have our screen aligned. As long as it's square to our opening, the menu allows us to move the screen up and down, left and right, which is a, a, just a great feature of these newer ones. Now, we also have a um, new glass screen. This also came from Handheld Legend. And as you can see, our new screen is going to be much bigger than the old screen, which is absolutely great. Um, up until recently, our only options for Game Boy Color screens have been physically smaller screens. And honestly, I don't want to cut up a perfectly good system for those types of screens. Not to mention, we can still play Game Boy Color games on our Game Boy Advances with IPS screens. So, this kit is especially good because of the newer, bigger screen. But, that means we're going to have to cut this out. Now, the shell that we're going to use today is just uh, an inexpensive one that was purchased off of 
um, not eBay. It was purchased off Amazon. Um, and the customer basically asked for any shell Pokemon related. And this particular one did come with, um, you know, the Pokemon screen, but we're going to need to use the, the bigger, the bigger screen. Um, because he didn't want to destroy the OE shell, um, because the one he gave me, which is still sitting over there, I'll have to go grab it, um, is in good shape and he's going to use it as a display piece. Um, because we, we can do that because basically we're just going to pull the main board out of it. The, the shell's going to be intact. The old screen's going to be in and, um, you know, we can put a little piece of foam in the back of it to kind of just hold everything in place so he can display it. So that brings us to our next point. Since this screen is bigger, we do need to cut this screen. Um, these bits of plastic in here are the same as the OE shell or should be the same as the OE shell. And we're going to have to more or less remove this entire perimeter. We need to cut partway into our LED opening, but that shouldn't be a problem because the bulb is, uh, the small LED bulb is much smaller than the opening. And more or less, it's going to just sit flush against this, this top bit. And that's what's going to hold our screen square. Um, and then it'll be all held in place with double-sided tape. Um, now, on Thingiverse, and I'll try to remember to link this below, uh, somebody had already made some guides for us. So... This will be our screen opening. We'll be able to just take an X-Acto knife and cut around and then trim it out. And these, somehow, and I'll have to double check, are gonna be, looks like some supports to also help align our screen. So, so this should be real nice. Um, and if you know anybody with a 3D printer, um, these literally took, uh, I think, 10 minutes to print, you know, all, all four of these pieces. So our other Game Boy is off camera. I will have to go grab that and I'll be right back. All right, we went and grabbed the Game Boy for our, uh, our donor board. Um, this is a teal in uh, very nice condition. It's not too beat up and, and even the original screen isn't too scratched. Um, so, you know, we just need to get into this. And like I was saying, the only part that we really need to take out of this is the, uh, the main board. So this is standard procedure, um, you know, for a, a Game Boy, we got uh, our tri-wing type screws. If you got uh, Phillips in there, then chances are somebody's already been messing with it. <coughs> But once inside, the Phillips are standard. Hmm. Okay, let's set that aside for a moment. There's our little IR window. We'll set it in with the shell. We'll set our screws here. Okay, from here we have Phillips, just a few of them. And we need to remove the LCD connector. Now the LCD connector is a standard bail that you just pull. And once it's lifted, then this ribbon will come out. And there's no reason to fight trying to get it out in this position. Um, because once the board is up, it'll slide right out. Like that. And here's what we need. 
Now what I told the customer I would do is just lay a small piece of foam in behind here and we'll reassemble that so he can put it on display. Okay, so here's our board. And you know, since this is an older system and it's used, we just wanna go ahead and clean up our pad area. All this, though this one is still bright and shiny. Um, and our solder points in question I believe here are going to be the test point here above select and the test point above B and the test point above A. And I believe that's it. And otherwise this board's in really nice condition. There's no, no evidence of anything being spilt into it. Um, so the only thing I'm going to do is get a little IPA into the, into the switch and into, into the volume. We'll just run it back and forth. Um, I'm pretty sure this one was turning on, but we didn't actually check that. Um, so just clean the switch. A few drops of IPA behind there and just run it back and forth. Cleans it up just fine. Okay. So there's that. Now we can, once again, they always give us this card, test before installation. And in this case, we actually can. So let's see, we need a little bit of protection here. So we'll go with this bubble wrap. You just want to really make sure that you have them lined up before you push on them. Um, they, they are a little on the fragile side. So our screen's going to sit that way. Gonna flip over that ribbon. Slide it in, close our bail. And I'm gonna hook us up to a power supply, so I'll be right back. Sorry about that, I had to get a cord for my power supply. So anyway, uh, on our bench supply, we have it set for three volts at one amp. Game Boy Color should not pull anywhere near that. So uh, we have the negative hook to negative, the positive hook to positive, and let's see what happens. Oop. Turn our, our out output. There it goes. Screen looks nice. Obviously there's no game in it, so we're not gonna go past that boot screen. But we know everything here is working now. So we'll go ahead and, oh, just for giggles, let's see what that's pulling. 0.15 amps, just for reference. And we could actually figure out a power draw from there. Okay. Put our board aside and put our screen aside. Okay. So everything is where we need to be. So let's go ahead and look at our, our shell. Give ourselves a nice clean spot to work. So the main thing we're going to need to do here is trim out, um, these bits in the shell and we can do it a few ways we can um, use a flush cutter we can use a hobby knife to score and and um, some some needle nose to crack it out which i believe probably be the easiest way um, we do have some nice new clean flush cutters so let's just take a peek. Let's see how stiff this plastic is since it's not an OE shell. Oh, this plastic's nice and soft. Okay, 
So let's do this. Let's try a couple methods just so we can look at them all. So if we take our knife, we'll score it down below, such as that, and wiggle it. And it comes out. Now on this, it's going to leave a lip and what you can use is a, a, a hobby or craft knife with a chisel blade and you can come in and clean it up. Or you can use our flush cuts and go ahead and clean out the bulk of it. And since this plastic's so soft, we're just gonna go around the perimeter and go ahead and make a few cuts to So <laughs> you can see the method and um, I'll be right back and we'll, uh... <laughs> sometimes it goes flying. So that's the method I'm gonna use. Uh, flash cutters seem to be the best on this particular shell. Um, and uh, I'll be right back when this is cleaned up. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned that all up. <clears throat> and in this particular case, like I was saying, this plastic was so soft, this was the best method. If you have um, a good sharp pair or a clean pair of flush cut pliers, um, this worked absolutely great. It got us trimmed the whole way back um, and, and, and it just worked well. Much cleaner than, than uh, the twist and break. Although sometimes that's exactly what you need, um, especially in, in some shells that are a bit tougher. And then the chisel tip, just went in and cleaned up any rough patches uh, because you know this IPS screen you want it to sit nice and flush for a clean installation. Now we can oh one thing I was doing while off camera is I was looking at these different bits that were 3D printed. I went ahead and left this top let me see this top bit in just because the original instructions showed it, but what this was for, from what I can tell, it's kind of L-shaped, and it would go in to this bit up here. So if you 3D print these, you can go ahead and remove all of it. You don't have to try to save this bit, or if you accidentally damage it, you know this will go in and give you a nice flush spot to, to work with. Um, and also, there may be some concern with how the screen fits after adding the spacers. Although these spacers will more certainly help align the screen, but this may be a little snug. And if that's the case, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this one out. <clears throat> and we'll just use this and this top bit of original plastic for our alignment. I'm gonna set those aside for a moment. And needless to say, you know, this is a clear shell and uh, you're gonna be able to see that if I leave it in. But you could use the double-sided tape, use that for alignment, stick it down, pop them back out. Okay, so the, the next bit we need to address is our screen opening. So here's our guide. And we can see exactly where we're going to need to be. Looks like green and orange looks good together. I hmm. wonder if I can get a green screen later. Eh, but that's up to the owner. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so we're going to go ahead. And, and honestly, with this opening, you don't have to be real precise. Um, just because the... Our new, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see it, but our new faceplate is going to cover up a rough edge. So it, it's not super critical, but we may as well use the guide 
to get us a good starting point. I think that's going to be good. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I'm just going to go ahead and score our lines a little deeper and a little cleaner. And I know my head's in the shot for the overhead camera, but this one I need to be up close and personal on. Now that that's done, you may have seen me do something like this in our um, the grip's coming loose um, in our Turbo Express mod um, repair video. Um, you know, we can just kind of snip it, give ourselves a spot to work from. Snip the corners, snip it in the middle somewhere. And then this will be a bend out, snap out kind of deal. Like I said, we don't really have to worry about this edge too much because it's going to be all covered. Okay, that's the bulk of it. We can just use our hobby knife to clean up anything rough. A little bit more right here. Starting to look pretty good. And let's find our actual base plate. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, it looks pretty good. We got just a touch of orange down in that corner. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that little bit right there. starting to look much better. Okay, our opening is uh, good. So let's go ahead and look at the screen real quick. Okay, 
I think we're just going to go ahead and put this in. No, we'll, we will go ahead and get a little solder on these points that we need. Since we're dealing with such a small spot, let's get a smaller tip on this thing. And this is the nice thing about a modern soldering iron. You know, you can change a tip while it's still hot and not have too many problems with it. So our connections are going to be A, B, and select. So I'll just put a little flux on there to make sure everything flows nice. We're up to temp, get some good solder. There we go. Clean the, the excess flux. And you can see whenever you're using good flux and good solder, I mean that should just flow right onto the board, especially little thin boards like this. Um, it's, it's not that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and check out our mounting situation. And we have a little bit of extra double side. And we don't want to cover up handheld legends there. Uh, paste this insulating film on the circuit board. So that's going to go on this side. And put this one on the back of the screen. <clears throat> so we will do that. And this one looks relatively square. So let's go ahead and put one of our brush out any dust. Put our one spacer in. And this also obviously gives a guide to where the cutout should be on the um, LED bulb. But we wound up not needing it. Side tapes in. Some sharp tweezers or, you know, a hobby knife uh, really come in handy when working with some of this stuff. Now, we're going to need to pull the screen protector. Screen protector doesn't want to come off. I'll be right back. All right. Um, yeah, that was a bit strange. <clears throat> the, um, the, the little film protector, normally you grab this little tab and they just pull right off. It seems like some of the glue, maybe from this little pull tab, had gotten under the edge. And uh, so I even tried to, I tried to lift it up from this side, you know, from an opposite corner, and it still felt stiff, so I didn't want to force it. And uh, I just got a little IPA, got underneath this, and eventually 
the the edge released and it, and it came up i don't know if it got hot in shipping or or what but uh you know like i've said these ips screens extremely fragile don't force anything um if that was a thin film transistor i would have just yanked it and pulled it it wouldn't even have been a big deal so but you can see i also removed our rear board um, just just as a precaution so we're going to go ahead and line up this screen. With the top. That should be better. And perfect. Okay. Here again, do not force these. So let's go ahead and get our film on the back, our insulating film. it just like that and we can use this double-sided tape to kind of hold her in place Like that. Okay. I guess since we're here, we can put our um, our touch sensors up in the corners. Um, some people I know will install these, and they choose to completely remove it. Let's see. Let's look at our board real quick. Put it over there, there's enough room to sneak our LEDs in, so it shouldn't be a problem. And also if you give the copper a little, a little tweak, um, It's easier to get them out. Okay. Both of our touch sensors are in. Our screen is down. All right. So now. We can look at. Well, you know what, since we're here, and we don't have any scratches and no dust, uh, let's go ahead and get our faceplate on. Just so we don't mess anything up. This is a, the one that came with the kit. Was a glass, 
a tempered glass screen uh, screen cover. So go ahead and put our ribbon in. Close our bail. All right. So now we need to just put a dab of flux on each one of these test points that we're going to use. And go ahead and tin them up. Since we're using leaded solder, you can have your iron temp way down, um, 350 or so. Okay. And we're going to use a little Kapton tape to hold everything in place. Um, let's see. Here's the wires it came with. And these are perfectly good. There's no reason not to use them. Other than they're all one color, but it's okay. I've only got three wires. So let's see. Since this is all going to just fold over, the reason I wanted to lay it out like this um, you know, so we can just lay our wires down, tape them in place, and then fold our motherboard into place. But, you know, we can't forget our buttons, um, which uh, it happens occasionally. And the reason we pre-tin everything is just so everything flows together real nice. Okay, so we have A, B, and select. So select is actually going to go over there. And honestly, A and B can almost be flipped because they're just going to be the back and forth buttons. Okay, so... Let's see, select, let's not cross these wires. Okay, here we go. Pull that one that way. And these ones this way. Now they're in order. Okay, let's trim off a little capped on tape. flat, hold them in position. Just like that. Okay, let's see. And B, this one's gonna be B. <clears throat> I 
And this one's going to be a... Oops. There we go. Hopefully we have enough wire left on that one. <laughs> I accidentally clipped it. Sometimes fingernails are better on this thin wire. Okay, I'm going up to A, that was going up to A. Okay, I just wanted to pull, I had some slack up here on the solder joint and I just wanted to pull it down so we weren't, we weren't so tight. Okay, so now all of our solder connections are made. Here again, we can clean up with a little IPA just to get off the excess flux. And we're good. So let's see what buttons we got with this kit. Okay, there's all the new, there it is. This isn't a bad kit. Um, I'll try to remember to link a um, Amazon link. I'm not an affiliate yet. Um, so, but this kit hasn't been too bad. Um, just a little bit of flashing right there, but you know, that, that happens in plastics. Matter of fact, I think I just knocked it off. Um, Quality wise, this isn't a horrible kit. Um, and I believe the shell is let's see. Oh, I messed something up. Okay, that's not the kid's fault. Um, I'm put a little bit of pressure on that bit of plastic whenever I was trimming, obviously. It was pushed over, I could see the, the white. So, there we go. Now it fits better. And it came with new membranes. Um, as I recall, this, this kit was only about 15, 
or sixteen dollars. Um, that seems pretty nice. Okay, there we go. Um, and it even came with a new IR cover. There's our switch. All right, so there's one bit of damage here. So I'll replace it and I'll put that in this. I'll use our OE switch. Um, what I found is the, the one upright broke loose. Um, I don't know if it was mishandled. It doesn't look like it was mismolded, but since this is gonna be display, I'll stick it back in our other shell. And here's our new hardware. Found with an IR cover. Don't know if I like that IR cover, it's just gray. It should be purple, so. We will use this one. Okay, where I decided to put that touch sensor, it's gonna interfere with our, our IR. So let's go ahead and peel that back up. Or maybe we can, you know what, we can just push it aside, get our cover in there. Let's stick it back into place. And everything should be fine. All right, since we laid our wires right in there, should be no problem rolling it over and getting our main board into place. Okay. Looks like it fits pretty good. I'm gonna have that AR or IR cover upside down. Okay, what do we got? We got some long ones and some short ones. Um, when using an aftermarket shell, always use their hardware. Um, you know, I found over the years that sometimes the OE screws are just a little different. They don't quite line up. And since this is a new shell, our hardware is going to be stiff. Um, now, the one nice thing about the Game Boy Color, as you can see here, the screw holes that you know these screws are going to go into are actually uh, marked. I keep a magnet on my micro, uh, microscope stand <clears throat> just to quickly magnetize a tip if I need to. All right, the buttons feel right. The board is being held a little bit before I push on it. Let's get a closer look. Uh, forgot to put that on. This should be between the other circuit board and our main board. I'll be right back. Okay, rookie mistake. <laughs> um, you know, I normally keep everything right here in front of me just so I can see all that. But, uh, you know, 
little insulators like that are, are important, especially when you're uh, working with non-OE parts. Um, you know, so you didn't want to see me take the screws out and fiddle with buttons again. So I figured we'd just trim that apart. So anyway, so we had moved our touch sensor. Um, we have the OE, um, IR sensor down in the shell. And our shell should just fit like that. There we go. wondering why there was extra screws, but that tells me why. Okay, don't have them snug the whole way down, but I have them holding the shell together. And let's go ahead and peel. Oh, that one's nice looking. When I ordered our kit, uh, originally I was gonna just get a standard gray uh, face plate, um, but they were out of them. So I got the white and that also dictated why uh, we went with the orange shell just to make sure that they kind of matched. Okay, let's see. Our volume wheel still works, so it's not captured. Switch works. Let's put some batteries in this, see what it looks like. Do I have a Game Boy Color game handy? I should. Oh, we've got our test cartridge. And several black and white cartridges. Uh, let's see, F1 Racer and Mario 2. I'm gonna get a proper color game. I'll be right back. Once again, sorry about that. Uh, problems with filming in a working shop, right? Okay, so how about a little Pokemon Gold? Um, haven't played with this one in a while. So let's see if... Uh, this is my personal cartridge. We'll see if the uh, game save still works. And let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. That is so much nicer than the original. Um, let's see what our touch sensors do. The ones the whole way up in this corner. This one changes color modes, um, which I guess is good if you're playing on a black and white cartridge uh, because you know one of the modes is just the black and white. And then after black and white, looks like we're back to our standard. And then this one is obviously our brightness. We got several levels there. All right, so the next thing is we did solder our connections and if we hold select and the A and B together, it should bring up our on-screen display. Oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, I might have to build one of these for myself. <laughs> All right, so, so there we go. Um, well, I guess I can continue my game. So let's turn the volume down for just a second. And we'll look at the uh, the screen. So the A and B should uh, go ahead and move us up and down. 
As you can see, we've got our pixel effect, our battery display on and off, color adjust, which is also that touch point, and then factory reset. Uh, and then our position, actually our position looks pretty good. It might actually be just a little twisted, but we're good. Um, to get into any of these, uh, you're gonna use select and I believe A, yes. And then you can use A and B to go back and forth and then select an A again to come back out of it. And it should time out on its own. Let's just check that real quick. If not, select AB will get you back out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> looks like I registered something on my select button since I was messing around. Um, yeah, and this aftermarket shell doesn't feel too, too bad. The buttons work. So there you have it. There's a uh, Q5 on-screen display from Handheld Legend in a Game Boy Color. Um, this is just another absolutely phenomenal kit. And uh, with the exception of that one little hiccup, you know, everything went pretty smooth. Uh, total time to do this was, even for a beginner, it probably should be only about 40 minutes or so. Um, so, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, go ahead and make those down below. And as always, I appreciate you being here and watching my videos. Um, please don't forget, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.